Hey, it's Chris. Today I've got a freeform tips video for you. In the past, I've already made several freeform videos that collectively have almost a million views. So I know people are really interested in this subject. And the reason I'm so interested in it is because I've been using Freeform to organize my thinking. And it's even ended up replacing some pretty important apps for me. All right, so let me just start by sharing seven really quick tips that I haven't yet covered in my other Freeform videos. So this should be all new information for you before we end up getting to the mega tip, how to organize your board. So we'll go through these fast, starting with Apple Pencil settings. Personally, I love the Apple Pencil. I just think differently when I'm writing and sketching stuff than I do when I'm typing. So if you use Freeform on the iPad a lot, which is my favorite place to use it, it's worth going into settings and Freeform, and then you'll see Apple Pencil, select and scroll. I have that checked, you can turn it on or off. You might as well just start there, turn it on, try it out, turn it off, try it out, see what you like best because it's pretty foundational if you're gonna be using the Apple Pencil. Now here's a really fun tip for you. You can actually create templates. It's not an official feature that I know of, but I have created a template myself and I use it all the time. So here's a peek at all my freeform boards. Let me click on this one here called template and you can see when this loads up, I've already kind of pre-drawn in some information and you'll see as we go, there's some other tips that we're gonna get to playing out here in this template. But I organize my freeform boards in a very specific way so I always know where things are and where to look. And so I've created a template for myself that makes it easy for me to just jump right into a new project. All right, so when it's time to create a new freeform board based on my template, I'll just go to my board labeled template. I've got it favorited so I can easily find it and say duplicate. And then I'll get template copy and it looks exactly how I want it to. I can get in there and give it a label and start filling it out and just be off to the races. So I don't even have to think about how I'm gonna organize it. I just start putting in information, right? So just as an example here, I could create something based off of my productivity course and maybe I'm gonna make a new sales page or something. I can give it some notes and I can start talking about how I'm gonna be putting it on sale for Christmas, 50% off, link in the description. So if you find yourself using Freeform in a particular way, and maybe you'll wanna organize things like I do, which I'll show you how to do in the second half of this video, templates can be your friend. All right, let's look at breaking apart and combining shapes. This is a big one. Now for the longest time, I didn't actually find myself using these shapes that Apple provides up here at the top menu. I just made my own shapes using the Apple Pencil if I was gonna draw something out. But you can actually save a whole lot of time if you go through these shapes, realizing that you can tap on them, hit the three dots there, and say break apart. And when you do that, you can actually use the individual components and pieces of these shapes. You don't have to use them as a whole. That can be really cool for illustrating and for diagramming stuff. So it works here on all the maps as well. So if there's a certain country that you want to use in a presentation, you can break that apart and you can see, I can just grab a whole continent and drag it out. And then here, like maybe I wanted to illustrate something having to do with the human mind, right? I could break this apart and then we could talk about, I could, first of all, I could change the colors of the different sections, right? Uh, but then I could also talk about, hey, maybe this part of your brain is used for X, Y, or Z. So the knowledge that you can break apart shapes can really shape the way that you use freeform. The other thing I wanna mention is that once you've placed a shape, you can actually change it. So if you grab the wrong map, for instance, you can hit those dots and say change shape, and you can switch this to anything else in any of the categories really simply. Now, one of the best uses for Freeform is for presenting stuff. So it is a collaborative app, and there's a really great feature called Follow Along, which will let people remotely follow along with your screen to see from your perspective as you're guiding them through a board. But for in-person meetings, I love to bring two devices, maybe my Mac and the iPad, open up the same board and maybe plug the Mac into the projector at the front of the room, for instance, and then I can sit back in my seat and as I draw on the board and mark it up, those changes appear in almost real time, basically real time, up on the monitor for everybody to see. So it's a great in-person presentation tool as well. Now this fifth tip here is really a stylistic thing. It's not a built-in feature, but it's something that I do that I get a lot of use from, and that is to use subtle gray highlights or notes or hints throughout my boards. You can see an example right here. When you use a subtle gray, then it lets you embed some information or some instructions or stuff that's not really important, but that you wanna reference later without it getting in the way. Your eye's not gonna be drawn to it. And as I zoom out here, you can see I've got these subtle gray notes all over the board, but it comes in really handy when you're diagramming or making a flow chart or something as well. Now you probably already know that you can tap on this connectors button down in the bottom right corner. And then when you tap on stuff, you'll get these arrows that let you just connect stuff. But sometimes you just wanna bring a little attention to an area of your flow chart. And so what I'll do sometimes is bring in a shape 
and give it a new color, like a really light gray. Don't wanna to go too dark with it. Just something that will kind of call it out from the white background. And then I go ahead and I move that using the dots to the back. And then I go up and I place that behind a group of items and it really makes a big difference in calling stuff out. Now that gray is actually a little too dark, I think. So I'm gonna go even lighter on it. And there you go, wow, really enhances the chart. Or like as you're looking at a composition, you know, maybe you're gonna present this to somebody just in this example of all this paper-like information, I can grab some text that I've already colored. And I know I've talked about this before, but then I can go in and change that after the fact. And maybe make something stand out a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on what is required. So in this hierarchy of information on the screen here, where I'm talking about the paper-like screen protector and the folio bundle, which you can now save $30 on right now, linked up down below. And if you notice, I know I'm gonna get comments. This grip that I'm using here, that's a paper-like grip. So if you really want a little extra control so you can fine tune when you're using your Apple Pencil, it works great for that. Cause you know, I can't really talk about anything Apple Pencil related without mentioning Paperlike. I got a Paperlike on here right now. I love this screen protector. And also the folio is great. Gives you two angles of incline plus that protection. I'd call it a huge upgrade for anybody who's really serious about using the Apple Pencil with Freeform. Now we're getting closer to that mega tip, which is basically the whole point of this video. You'll be so glad that you watched. But first I want you to think about as you're going about building a board, do some thinking about how you're going to use it later. The reason I bring this up is because I usually use Freeform to think, to put together some of my thoughts before I even write. They say that writing is the same thing as thinking and really can you even think without doing some writing because writing really forces you to think about stuff. Well, I've been thinking with Freeform. So I want you to think a little bit when you're creating a board about how you're going to use it later and not just how you're gonna use it, but the devices that you might be using it on. For instance, I go out of my way to be very careful about how and where I place columns of text, for instance, because oftentimes while I build my boards, usually on the iPad, I'll read through those columns of text on the iPhone and that column of text is just like a website and then I can scroll through on my phone down through in the right order those trains of thought. The other thing to note is I'll often reference my boards after I've got all my thoughts in order on my Mac, on a bigger screen. So I think about that too as I'm creating stuff. Tip number seven, I'm back on the gray thing, but you have to try using gray, not the black, but gray for your pencil. Something mentally just clicked for me when I started using the pencil with gray because it was like writing with a real pencil. My brain understands it to be a pencil when it's gray like that instead of actually black. All right, let's get to the good stuff here. These are the four stages of creating and using a freeform board. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, if you use freeform, you're going to create a board, you're going to populate it, you're gonna organize it, and you're gonna utilize it. This is kind of my organization plan, roughly speaking, when it comes to my freeform boards, right? So kind of think of this as a board and I'll label it immediately in the middle. You saw this on my template and we'll go back to the template so you can see it. I have stuff to be sorted over on the right and the reason is because when stuff gets shared, it goes over to the right, so that makes sense. And then over on the left is kind of what I consider to be my sandbox zone or direction. Sometimes I kind of think of it as an archive or library where I store stuff out of the way for what I'm working on as well. And then down below, that's my finalized area. That's where I've sorted the information that I've collected over on the right, where I've really thought through things. So anything underneath my label, that's sort of like where I've done the actual work and where things are happening. And then you can see at the top of my board, that's where I kind of put some important notes. I keep it sparse up there and it's sort of just my instructions or directions or focus for the board to kind of keep myself on track. And I want you to notice, this is really interesting, the way that I've ended up setting this up is that the x-axis ends up being the chaotic side of things, my sandbox and things to be sorted all live on this horizontal line. And then going up and down vertical, the y-axis, that's where I've ordered things, whether it's my important notes, kind of my steering directions for each board, and then all the work that I've done. So that's the beauty of an app like this in the first place. And I think it makes sense to call it free form because it does have the order and the chaos, the freedom, and then the formation. So switching back to my template here, you can see in action, I've sort of set things up to put the label in the middle, get my directional notes, my 
my kind of meta note up at the top, my directions to myself. What is this project about? And then over to the right, that's where to sort goes. I share things to this board. They're gonna come in, pop over to the right here. And then what I'm thinking, the actual organization of the information down below and my sandbox that's off to the left. So if I just need to work through something and sketch it out, figure it out, I'll do that over there before I bring it in to the final area underneath the label. Now there's an actual reason why I organize things this way. Number one, it just kind of happened naturally based on Freeform's features and the way that I work. But number two, when I do things this way, then on every board, I know where to look and where to put things. And I don't have to spend any time thinking about organization. And that ends up saving me a lot of time and just sort of cognitive load. So right in the middle of the board as a frame of reference, I've got sort of my light gray instructions of what to do. And I can see, here's the project name, just write it in. And then I can go up top real quick. What is this project about? What am I focused on? And if I forget, I can come back and reference it. Right? And then I can start thinking about stuff. And then as things get shared to the board, like the logo for my course here as just a sample or this testimonial uh, from someone that took the course and liked it, I know where to look for those. Like, okay, here's some assets that came in that I need to organize. So then I can take those and actually start organizing them into my board, however that I, I want them to be. And I've actually really liked and feel like I've really benefited from putting into use this particular method of using and organizing freeform information because usually when you open up freeform, it's kind of like having a blank piece of paper, this blank board and it's infinite. You can scroll all over and that's a little intimidating. It's like, what do I put here? How do I get started? And to just know, well, here's how to proceed with the board. It makes things flow immediately. And the reason is because I've pre-solved the where and how things are going to go issue. And so it lets me spend my time thinking instead of working on the layout. So let's talk about how to utilize your freeform boards now. So sometimes a freeform board is temporary in nature and other times it ends up being something that you're going to come back to and reference over and over again. So you can see in my freeform boards, I've got several that I've marked as favorites so that I can get back into those really easy and actually reference them from time to time. But the other thing you can do is export a board as a PDF. And if you wanna do that, you just go up to the top left there and tap on export as PDF. So then obviously you can share that with colleagues for instance, or, and this is something I really love doing, you can export your board as a PDF and upload it to something like ChatGPT or an AI app that will let you have a conversation with your board then. And that can be pretty mind blowing and productive. So that's sort of what I consider the dine-in or takeout approach. Sometimes I just get back into freeform when stuff's favorited and just dig around in the actual board. Other times I export it as a PDF and sick the AI on it and kind of extract even more value from the stuff that I've taken the time to sit there and think about and organize. And it's great. All right, so we covered a lot today. I hope you got something out of this video, whether it was one of the quick tips or maybe some ideas about how to organize your board. Don't forget to check out the course, Learning to Be Productive. It really will help you get more done in less time in the Apple ecosystem with less burnout, and it's on sale right now. Limited time only for Christmas, 50% off. Check out the link down below to get in on that. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. There's so many cool apps and accessories that you're missing out on every Friday if you don't check it out. Thanks for watching today. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.